The DS Incubator continues on the series about working with Docker. And uh, today we're going to be talking about managing images and maybe a little bit of using and managing volumes as, and users. And with those two topics, you know, I'm, I'm going to be closing this series. Uh, again, this is kind of part two of the series where we are getting quite technical. Um, in part one, uh, we covered the most superficial uses of uh, images um, and containers, but uh, we didn't go over, for example, the, how do you actually get rid of containers or you get rid of images. So today we're going to be talking about how to manage images, how to find images, how to find these annoying dangling images. Um, also, how to remove one and multiple images at, at once. Sometimes you need, you need to free space in your system and you want to do a batch remove. Uh, also, we're going to be exploring some of the images that the Rocker project provides and identify a particular stack of images that are quite useful in reproducible research. Uh, and just as a demo to see how you could use the, one of those images um, to get the latest version of R, the development version of R, and a specific version of R, which sometimes it is useful either to kind of lock your analysis in a particular state with particular software, or because you want to, for example, explore if your analysis is going to break with the upcoming version of R. So let's jump to this other um, page. This is also in the DS docker repository in the folder of the day which starts with the number five and says the name managing images so what i want to show is as usual a lot of stuff in the terminal uh, first i'm gonna um, show the, the basic command that we're gonna be working a lot in this section um, which is docker images so in the same way that before we use docker ps to list containers. Now we do uh, Docker images to list all the images that I have. So let me do this a little bigger. So as you can see, I have a bunch of images and I already identify a couple of weird things like those images at the top that say known as a repository and known as tag. So that's usually useless. So I want to get rid of that because it's taking up space. Also notice how, for example, some images take quite a bit of space. Like this one, for example, is taking 3.8 gigabytes. Um, and I may even have duplicates with different tags. So knowing how to clean up it is, is, is very important. So I already showed you with Docker images, you can list all of the images that you have. <clears throat> As usual, if you need help, you could type help and learn a little bit of what things you can do with the Docker images command. Uh, you can uh, filter uh, for images explicitly. And that's what I'm going to be using in a moment to show you how to filter uh, dangling images. Uh, but there is also an uh, implicit filtering, which is uh, pretty cool. So if you do Docker images and you identify that there is a, a, a repository, like for example, Ubuntu, that you want to filter for, you can just type Docker images Ubuntu, just the name of the you know what appears in that column repository, and you already filter for that. Let me clear this up and do that again so it's kind of clear uh, what we do. So just having a look at this, I already see there is, you know, Ubuntu 14.04, uh, 16, 18, and latest. So say that uh, I decide that 14.04 is too old of an image, it's an old version, and I want to remove that. Then the command that we're going to be using is the docker remove image. Before we use the rm command when we were deleting uh, containers, but now we're working with images, so we add the i docker remove images. If you want to get some help, of course, you type minus minus help and, and there is. So uh, once again, let's do a docker images Ubuntu to remember the one that I want to remove. So to specifically remove the one which tag is 14.04, then I do docker remove image Ubuntu and let's do 14.04. So that should get rid of that specific image. As you can see, there is a bunch of layers that kind of got uh, removed. So if I repeat the command Ubuntu, uh, Docker images Ubuntu, I should you know not see that image. It's gone forever. Now, if I wanted to get rid of all of this, uh, remember that before we learned about um, this minus Q, um, minus Q, um, parameter uh, flag that you can use to get not not the entire table that you see 
it stands for quiet. So what you see is only the SHA. So basically this column here that says image ID. And that is useful because once you have the SHA, then you can, you can pass that as an argument to uh, iterations of the command docker remove image. And the way I like to do that is just by piping that. So I press the up arrow and then I type, uh, uh, you know, Xarx is the command in, in the shell that allows you to uh, basically pass each of those um, strings of text that we have to the left, uh, all those IDs, uh, automatically passes them all the way to the right, to the right of this command. So I'm doing now a docker remove image for each of those IDs one by one. So I, I run that and it gets rid of a lot of stuff. I see that something was not removed. Um, it says that because some child images are, um, are using it. So let's go back to the Ubuntu to see what did we succeed to remove. So we succeeded to remove uh, everything except this one here. I'm not very sure um, which image depends on it. So I'm going to try a Docker remove image Ubuntu latest to see if I, I, success, I successfully remove it, uh, if I remove it individually. So this also kind of shows that the process might be a little bit uh, interactive and not always um, you know, it, 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 I'm now guessing that the image that this one was depending on is one of the ones that uh, I were also removed, but before they were actually removed. So once they were removed, then I could remove this one. That's my guess. Maybe Alex has some thoughts about that. Um, so I'm going to make a little pause here. Um, we learned how to list images, how to filter them. Uh, actually, no, let me show you also the dangling image issue. Um, and, then, and then we do a little pause for um, on the fly questions. So again, Docker images will give me now the list of images, except the Ubuntu ones that are gone because we just removed them. But there is this none thing that we see there. Those are images that are taking up space and they're not useful. I learned that they are uh, created in many ways. The one way that I can articulate here, the one I know, maybe other people here know more ways, is when you create an image and you tag it in a particular way, say Ubuntu 14.04, and then you change uh, the, the source file that creates that image, and then you rebuild the image with exact same tag. Uh, apparently, when that happens, the second one kind of wins and gets the tag, and the other ones get untagged, but they are still kind of hanging in there. Um, I guess that you could retag them or rename them, but I never did that. I just removed them. How you remove them? Well, you remove them using the. Remember that I mentioned that the Docker images help file. Oops, help. It uh, has that uh, filter command that you already use when we, when we were filtering for. Um, for containers, right? So we're going to be using that. Um, and okay, the issue is that you need to know which um, things you can filter for. Uh, for that, uh, you would go to uh, here, uh, of course, to the Docker uh, documentation. I put a link there, uh, and in particular addresses the problem of dangling issues. But you can see, uh, you know, in the filtering section, all the valid filters that you can you can use. The one we are going to be using now is, you know, specifically the dangling uh, images, uh, because that is a pretty common problem, at least for us, at two degrees it has been, and quite annoying. Uh, so let me just leave that here on record. So Docker images with the filter command. Uh, it, you know, for sure, you can also use just one hyphen and F, and then you can say dangling equals true. So that is not super intuitive. You just need to read the documentation to learn that one. So when you, you when you run that, you get just you know those two images, and then uh, you know I could do what we did before. First, I want to get just the ID so I can remove them. Uh, so with the minus Q again, or quiet, I think it is right. Quiet. Let's try that. Yeah, I get just the IDs. And now I like to press it, the up arrow and pipe that into Xarx that will you know, do what I'm about to type for each of those um, strings of text. So what I want to do is uh, docker remove image. So with that, those images seem to have been deleted. So if I now rerun Docklen, um, docker um, images and search and filter for dangling images, as you have known, and the Docker images in general is now looking a little bit cleaner. Um, 
Okay, this is a good time to make a little pause um, before we uh, touch the last two topics that I'm aiming for today. Uh, let's see your faces and see if there is any comment. Any question or comment from what we've seen today? Yeah. Uh, I think CJ had, had uh, was the one that you know had the most experience with dangling images, uh, right? CJ, it was uh, pretty annoying. Yeah, I was going to ask some questions. Um, so, in, in my experience, when you turn off an image, like if you start an image, so something that happened to me recently is I wanted to make a new image that was based on an image that I had existing in my in my Docker environment. Uh, but I wanted to make a minor change to it and then actually save that as an additional one, like a test, a new test Docker image that I could then run um, with just making a few minor modifications to files. And so it was pretty interesting that I could like spin up a new instance of that image, go in there, change some files, um, specifically was not using this RM option so that the changes would stay there. And then when I came out, then I was able to like merge those changes into the existing Docker image and name it something else. So I had a new um, image that had just the changes. But what was weird about that for me was once I exited the instance, I kind of, I thought that the instance was kind of automatically turning itself off, but it kind of sticks around for a bit of time. And I guess that's why you can end up with these like dangling images or something. So what's not super clear to me is what does it mean when you exit the instance and you think it's gone away, but it's still kind of there and you can even merge it with another instance? You could maybe even turn it back on and start off where you were last. And what is the proper way to like just turn it off completely and say, I don't want this thing anymore, I'm done with it? Um, and how is that interrelated with these like dangling things that you're talking about? Yeah, in terms of best practices, I'm hoping that Alex would have some comments. The, my, my feeling is that, uh, I mean, containers, not sure if it really answers your question, but I think it's a good opportunity to uh, almost kind of wrap up what we've, we've been learning. Like the, the containers are usually like considered like throw away. You may, you know, run them to experiment things. You can create images out of running containers, but that's not the best idea. Generally, you want to recreate uh, them through images that you actually type the source code in, in, a, in an image docker file um, and that's that's just about as much as I, I could add here Alex do you have any any thoughts yeah I'll, I'll second that thought that the entire design philosophy behind docker is one to make uh, execution environments that are disposable uh, and two reproducible uh, so this idea of creating an image out of a container that you have manually gone in and done stuff to is sort of antithetical to that second uh, part of the design philosophy uh, so in general finding support for that uh, in Stack Overflow or any of the other documentation sources is going to be pretty sparse at best and discouraged. Um, it is possible, but it is tricky. Um, that said, uh, if you do somehow do that and you get this dangling image that is just there, um, the thing that you will often find is Docker really doesn't like it. Uh, in fact, it won't permit it at all. Uh, if you have to get rid of an image, if there is still a container associated with it. And if you create the image from the container, then that image is still associated with the container that you created it from. It's the you have set up that linkage, but in the opposite direction of normal. Because normally what you have is you have your Docker file, you build the Docker file, you get the image, you take the image, you start it, that becomes a container. Um, and then 
in order to get rid of all of those things, you get rid of the containers first, then you get rid of the image, then that should be it. Um, does that answer your question, CJ? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think I was really expecting a, a, to fully wrap my head around it, but I was just prompting like what I thought would be an interesting conversation around that topic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it adds it adds some flavor to it for sure. I think uh, CJ or Maro, if you can go back to the terminal, uh, I want to introduce a different set of commands for managing images uh, that sort of comes at the problem in the opposite direction of what Maro was showing us earlier. So, uh, Maro, can you run uh, Docker images? So what we saw from Maro earlier was, I see my list of images, and then I want to get rid of specific ones. And I can do that either using the uh, XARGs, or I can do it, use the filter. And those are, I'm effectively taking a specific image ID and then getting rid of it. Um, the opposite direction of that is, what if I just really want to just clear off as much as possible? Um, so the command for that is uh, prune. So uh, the two related commands uh, would be docker image prune and docker container prune. And so uh, I think it's image singular, if I recall correctly. Um, but what this does is basically docker image prune will go through and get rid of any image that does not have a container associated with it. And docker container prune uh, will go through and get rid of any container that is not running. So if you have no running containers and then you run those two commands in sequence, you will get rid of everything. Uh, yeah, definitely hit no on that one for right now. Um, so, Maro, if, yeah, uh, can you just run Docker containers to just like see the list? Or Docker container ls, that's the one. Oh, you don't have any open containers. So if Maro were to run Docker image prune right now, all of the images would be gone because none of them have any containers associated with them. The, the container versus image dichotomy is one of the trickier things to wrap your heads around in Docker, uh, but it is something that is pretty essential when managing how much resources you're throwing at the different things. That's cool. I mean, one thought I have is that, uh, you know, I experienced that in programming in general, that sometimes, and I do remember the early days of programming, it was so frustrating because uh, everything was full of friction. And, and I just embraced it as, a, well, I mean, I guess programming is hard. <laughs> and I didn't know better. But, uh, but then when I did know better, I realized that it was a workflow issue. Um, but sometimes, you know, it takes some experience with the problem until you polish your workflow to a to a point where you do, you know, you still may face some friction, but it's, it's, it's occasional. Uh, and I see that a lot of the time, you know, a lot of people with, um, that has spent a lot less time um, in one particular technology going around problems in a way that, um, that just exposes that they still need to work in the workflow. And I hopefully this conversation opens uh, another conversation about, okay, let, what are our workflows? Uh, do we even need to, uh, to, to change them? Uh, as opposed to kind of brute force approach to, to fight every time the same problem. I think I heard a hands up somewhere or a comment. Yeah. Jackson, we see your face. We don't hear you. What? Yes. No, good now. Yes, we hear you. Oh, okay. Um, just, to, just wanted to quickly comment on what you were talking about with workflow 
those. It's also, it can be super frustrating sometimes for myself. I notice a lot of the time where I know that I'm not using the right workflow and I can't find documentation online that teaches me what the right workflow is. Yeah. That, it drives me nuts where I'm like, I know I'm not doing this right. I know there's a better way to, to deal with this and I don't know what it is and like, I don't know how to figure it out. So I just wanted to, in case other people have, have been down that rabbit hole, it's really frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting very excited about, you know, for example, this kind of um, of little project, right? Like teaching this thing because I learn it, but also because I expose my gaps of knowledge to Alex, for example, who has more experience. So, you know, sometimes the best way to learn the, the workflow that works is to work with someone who has tried them all and uh, and they figure it out, you know, because they are also easier. They, they find it easier to curate the overwhelming amount of information that you find out there. About, oh, how should I do this? And then... It's very hard to judge, you know, which is the best way, uh, right? And, and someone who has tried it, is like, well, as, as far as we know today, the best way is this one. And once you try it, it actually does work. Yeah, I remember like, when I first started programming and was just dealing with, with package management in Python, and it was driving me nuts. And there were like just so many different, different approaches to doing it. And I was a total novice. I wasn't even understanding like what the different approaches meant or why one would be better than the other or that they were even different approaches like i didn't even recognize that they were actually different ways of doing of doing the same thing basically and it was like yeah the point that i did realize that i was like holy crap i wasted so much time <laughs> <laughs> trying to understand this yeah. alex go ahead um yeah maro i am hoping that we can take a, a quick detour mm -hmm. uh to also put one more little uh, nuance into CJ's question. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Can you do Docker run Alpine latest? So Alpine is just a minimal Linux distribution. I'm having them run this because it is small and quick to run. So Docker images. Alpine, it's there. Docker container ls. Uh, unable to find pulling. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. So we have, uh, and Maro, can you open up a new terminal? And do, uh, yeah, Docker container ls. We can see Alpine is running, and uh, it's been up for 15 seconds now. So the when I was describing the Docker design philosophy, the two components were reproducible and disposable. Disposable sometimes means uh, the best way to get rid of something is just nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Um, so let's get rid of this in the most forceful way possible, <laughs> uh, which would be uh, Docker container, or Docker uh, RMI Alpine. And this is going to fail for us uh, because it's saying this container is using its referenced image. Okay, then we can do Docker uh, container remove or Docker container RM. Uh, and then the hash is 2EE9. Uh, okay, well, or I can do well, practical. Practical gates, yeah. Could that be docker remove right away? Docker remove practical. Hmm, interesting. The, the fact that. Can you hear my voice? Yeah. The fact that, um, that when I do docker remove with a little bit of the name it doesn't pre-populate suggests that it's not going to work but let's try that so docker container remove and the hash 3130 cannot remove right container ah, okay mm -hmm. and this one failed because it's not uh uh you can't remove a running container so what we can do now is let's try docker rmi alpine latest uh, force, uh, dash dash force. 
And now let's take a look at our containers. Okay, that is still running. Uh, Docker image. Where'd it go? Uh, and we can see that the Alpine image is gone, but we still have that container floating around. So now we can do Docker uh, Docker RM practical gates. Uh, dash dash force. By the way, Alex, is the Docker the container less is the same as PS or is like suitably different? Uh, Docker. So Docker PS shows you actively running containers. Mm -hmm. uh, Docker container LS shows you all containers that have not been removed. Okay. So if you do uh, Docker container stop practical gates, mm -hmm. so as we can see, even people who are practiced in the use of Docker still get error messages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, cannot stop unknown error after kill runs. You did not terminate. I've seen that uh, before. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, that's weird. Sorry, I had to type passwords. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, but it worked before, so I'm hoping that it's going to work now. Um, some weird problem with armor or something. There you go. Yeah. Now, now it's, it's, it's working as you expect. So sometimes you do run into stuff that just does not want to stop <laughs> and you just have to like, the, the ultimate expression of what I have had to do in order to kill a container was to literally stop Docker entirely or completely reboot my computer. <laughs> and then Docker doesn't automatically start all the containers again after you reboot your computer. And so then you can kill it. All right. If um, if that you know wraps what you know the approach you wanted to show to removing images, kind of the other in, in the other direction, uh, then probably let's open the floor for you know one last round of questions and comments and, and call it a session because we are at a half hour. We're good. Okay, what we did not cover is uh, a quick overview of the um, images page of the Rocker project to just show many options that you may want to use at some point in your in your work with this with a, like trying to advertise the stack that is called version stack, which you might want to use to freeze a system, including the you know the system dependencies, R and R packages. So when you have something working and you want to share it as is and lock it there, you know, that's probably the stack you want to use. So I may, I may sh show that quickly next meetup. And then the other thing I want to show is that basically with that stack, you can also use the tag um, devel, which gives you R in development or R as it is being produced today. So maybe last night, for example. Uh, and sometimes that's useful, particularly if you develop packages and you get emails from a client saying, hey, your package is going to break with uh, the version of R that is upcoming, so please change this or that. So you want to reproduce the problem, and the way is precisely to get that um, R version, which hasn't been even released. Alex? Uh, yeah, I know we're over time. Just real quickly, um, I think we've reached a critical mass of people that want to do like a half-day workshop on how to actually create your own images and include your own code mm -hmm. as part of Docker. So, uh, you know, not just using the images and managing the images that other people are creating, but to make your own. Uh, so for a half day afternoon-ish European time mm -hmm. workshop, uh, do we prefer Wednesdays or Fridays? Because those seem to both be days with relatively few meetings. 
can we vote uh, on Slack? Because uh, also my computer is about to die. I thought it was plugged, and it is, but it's not charged. So I may it may drop. Cool. Um, is that okay? I may do a poll with yeah. you, Alex. Great. I will set up a poll in the coding channel. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao.